Watch Papa's War for Cybertron. Optimus Prime. Versus Soundwave. Okay. Is this, or is this not, a lot of highly anticipated robot for the one frame? Check out the sound, sound wave with that light piping. That is fantastic. I love light piping. Before we get into it too deep, can I just say as well, the QC on these guys so far just seems to be exceptional. Just the joints are so toit, like a tiger. You're really not gonna have to worry about joint strength throwing off any kind of poses that you're hoping to throw out there. Sweep the leg, Cobra Kai. In the 80s, they were baddies, but now they're the good guys. Why don't we go ahead and start with Optimus Prime, huh? These Netflix figures really are the best value, best way to get these bad boys. Optimus comes with his trusty blaster, as one would probably expect. He does, if anyone was interested, to anyone playing at home, it is, he does still have his removable matrix, which is nice. But then, as with the other Voyager class releases, what makes him such great value is the fact that you get two battle masters. So in Optimus's case, we get Enna Axe and Steel Drawn which are, you know, Sound Barrier and Birdie McStab Face, respectively, uh, done hilariously in a see-through yellow plastic, which is cool, to kind of allude to Prime's whole G1 Energon axe thing. Cha-cha-cha, one would have to assume, right? And more out of a sense of obligation than any real desire, here they are alongside their mainline counterparts. Actually, seeing them next to their originals like this, don't you reckon it's got like a little bit of a Lucky Dip, Japanese, like Takara vibe to it. I'm a huge fan of the way this blaster tucks away for storage. Just so good, so tidy, right? Try and move me, bro, I dare you. Go on, try and move me. I'm cultivating mass. How undeniably badass is that? What will it be? One at a time or all at once? There's just really something about this whole getup that makes me want to do like a Daredevil style, like hallway one take fight scene. Um, so I'm going to. Well, that's just prime. And while we're feeling all smashy bashy, let's go ahead and have a look at Series Mate repainted Megatron with Energon Flail. You didn't think it'd be that simple, did you, Prime? The taking of a life is anything but simple, Megatron. This might seem like an odd time to mention it, but these guys didn't come with any blast effects, which I thought was a bit cheek eye. Looking at the two of them together just makes me feel old more than anything else. And, it definitely reaffirms my belief that he should have had yellow eyes and that would have been splendiferous. But, you know, mainly old. And child was born just the other day Came into the world in the usual way Well, I was gonna start the sound wave portion of the review but I can't seem to find him anywhere. Can anyone at home spot where he might be hiding? over there! That's right, children. Laser beak. Begin recording. Ever since those like leaked images popped out, oh, look at that light piping go. Um, ever since those leaked images came out, I think everyone has been dying for this. Actually, I would say even since the very first moment people saw the Siege iteration, I think everybody knew that this was on the cards, right? What I do find interesting though, is that they decided to make what is obviously such a highly desirable figure, such a difficult one to track down. I know, obviously a Walmart exclusive. In Australia, I don't know how Hasbro Australia did it, but thank you. They managed to, well, thank them and thank Kmart Australia for deciding to pick up some 
because I am very grateful to have the opportunity to be able to go brick and mortar and just buy this figure, right? Like online exclusives and stuff are cool because you get some weirder stuff, but something like G1 Soundwave like this should not be exclusive. So in terms of accessories, Soundwave is a little bit of a mix of the expected, the delightful and the pointless. So, obviously, any sound wave needs to come with his awesome choo 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 shoulder blaster thing. Oh. Pipe away, you little legend. Then he also comes with his pistol with its like cool pull out bit. He also comes with the blaster turned stick thing from Sage, which was kind of a little more necessary in Sage. I know a lot of people like to stick this over Megatron's shoulder and be like, oh look, it's more G1, but it just sticks out a little bit, I don't know. In terms of it being a blaster, I think it looks a little bit goofy with Soundwave, to be honest. It just doesn't seem like the kind of ordinance that he'd be packing. It's a little bit comical, almost. Zap. If you were so inclined, I guess you could like put it out into its baton mode, then kind of turn it into a, a hammer for Soundwave to wield. But uh, that being said, the vibe is a lot more croquet mallet than anything else. Playing through. Dook. Being a Netflix Voyager release, he does also come with the added bonus of getting a couple of the cassettes. You get Laser Beak and you get Ravage. Supposedly in more Earth esque tape mold designs. When I first saw pictures of this guy, I thought that he might have had. A slightly deeper chest than the Siege version so that you could get a couple of tapes in there if you wanted to but um, he still only takes the one and he does of course still have my favorite design cue for any sound wave the ability to press his own button like he did in the show eject while we're talking turkey space turkey let's have a quick look at a comparison in uh, cassette mode for the Netflix laser beak versus mainline laser beak. And you can see here, there are a lot more paint apps picked up ah! on this one. Those wing pieces and stuff are still the same, but um, the amount of detail put into these tiny apps is really quite admirable. Ravage a little less so, but it is nice that like the amount of paint apps that we got here have been repurposed in a more detailed way just to kind of give him that sort of cassette vibe. So that's a nice little touch. All right, here they are transformed. Uh, the differences with Ravage are a little more subtle. You sort of only really notice in terms of the paint scheme. That seems to be the only remolding. Other than, let's see if I can get it to focus. Oh, I can. They've given him a different face, which I don't know. I probably would have rather that money in retooling went into giving the Netflix version um, his red stripes as well as like the dots on his knees and just the little apps that he was missing compared to the Siege version. The differences here are a little more apparent. So we've gone from the cool Cybertron head, which was awesome to see, to how now having a much more like, what is he, a falcon? I don't know. Raptor? Cool bird head. It is missing the little Decepticon logo that the mainline version has, but he does have a little one on his head instead, which is noise. If we take a look at the head sculpts, God, there are a couple of broad boys, a couple of broad beans, it's hard to get them both in shot. Right, if we have a look, the Netflix version is a lot smoother and a lot closer to sort of that classic G1 cartoon sort of look for Soundwave. Whereas if we have a look at the Siege version, that's that slightly more uh, angular, over-designed, well not necessarily over-designed, just more intricately designed Cybertronian form. I love how they are both inherently Soundwave, but just different enough that, you know, you don't feel like you're getting the exact same experience. Oh, that's interesting. Netflix has the more, more easily accessed hexagon holes. If we come around the back, they've done away with the big back panels that the Siege version has. They could have almost maybe used that to put in space for battery packs in alt mode, maybe. I don't know. I do think they add a cool little element of depth to Sage Soundwave's silhouette. 
Whilst I am so glad that I've picked up the Netflix version of Soundwave, I do feel a little bit like the Siege version is throwing off a slightly, slightly cooler silhouette, slightly more imposing, just because it's that little bit less stout than the Netflix one. Also, just while we still got them out, the Netflix version does not have the same red trim on his wrists and weapons that the Siege version does, which I think is a shame. I like the red trim. Especially in this instance, I think it would have really brought out his eyes. Even though I think I prefer the Siege version, if someone told me I could only keep one, it would have to be the Netflix version. Because as much as I love his Siege counterpart, it's like this is now the definitive mainline Soundwave figure, right? For a final comparison, let's go ahead and get him in there with OG, G1 and Soundwave. Now, I do have an actual, like, original Soundwave. This is like the Toys R Us reissue where it came with the expanded chest. So you could have two tapes in there. These were the two tapes I happened to have on hand. Honestly, I would have rathered a little bit less of a deco on Laserbeak to have gotten a couple little colored highlights that you see in the shoulders, same as on the knees. Those knee apps were on the Siege one, but they're not on this one. The other thing that just now that you're looking at it, sort of, is a little bit of a shame, is that they didn't remold the forearms. These are just the Siege forearms. And so they've got all that intricate detail where the rest of him now is quite flat surfaces to go with that whole hard 80s aesthetic. Which I get, because when you look at G1 Soundwave, those are some really crisp, flat lines with just some subtle, subtle dips. The shape is represented. It just would have been nice if this had a more flush finish, just so that it really felt like that whole Earth Mode vibe. Minor quibble. Let's go ahead and get him turned into the blue rectangle that we're all apparently dying for. Step one, flip in the hands, spin the waist. God, that's a very tight joint as well. All of these joints are incredibly tight. Head away. Gotta get these arms, make sure they're completely out straight. Twist both wrists out. Then we're gonna fold these back and around. Snap those wrists together. Bring them back around to the front. Flip up these calf covers. Fold out these gray pieces. Then fold both those feet up inside. And bring those covers down and around on top of the feet. Now twist the legs out. Then I'm sure you can imagine where this is going. What's so good about his essentially like Rock Lord transformation is it can be really cartoon accurate. These feet should just tab in there along with this gold panel. That is obviously the same on both sides. Then you can lift this panel up, fold out these space fillers, which is pretty kind. They will go onto these slots here. If everything, including the fates, are aligned. There you have, bling, most of his 80s Walkman. If you come around the back with the accessories, they can plug in to these holes on the back. Not quite, you know, a battery compartment, but it's a nice little nod. And then his little Austin pistol can just go there for some reason. You know what? I bet that actually works as a belt clip so you can clip it to your pants and Star-Lord about the place. The benefits of storing his bitty bits on the back is kind of twofold really because obviously, you know, weapon storage is great and it also does make him more stable should you wish to display him in this mode. Meep. When it comes to a vehicle mode comparison, there's really only one place you need to go, right? That's a pretty nice match, even down to the decals and the little squares and stuff. Right, you've even got the left and right for the audio. We've got the button. Similar shapes on the screen. I don't know. I don't know if they necessarily needed to have little cyber markings and stuff, but what do you do? <laughs> there is something undeniably satisfying about that, right? Doesn't it make you kind of just want to like, bloop. Just Star Lord out of here. Now, 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 now. Who won? You decide. Uh, battles of history. I don't know. I guess Soundwave has more retooling, which is some big points in Soundwave's favor. For my taste, this Optimus Prime is hitting more points for me. I didn't really need the trailer, and I do love some Battle Masters. I do just find myself wishing he had those yellow eyes, right? 
I probably also would have preferred, given how simple the changes are to um, Laser Beak and Ravage, I know there is most kind of iconic too, but I probably would have preferred if he came with cartoon coloured Rumble and Frenzy, just for a bigger point of difference. I mean, they are largely the same toy, just get whatever you want, dudes. Both of them!